Hey guys, Tanner here, and today I'll be actually doing my, an episode review of Power Rangers Mega Force Episode 1 Mega Mission. Um, I only have about 18 minutes worth of actual filming here because my memory card is stupid and only lets me do 18 minutes. So I'm going to jump right into this and see if I could try to get this all down in one part. If not, there, this will be a two part review. Um, so, anyway, um, basically, this is the 20th anniversary season, and to show that, the episode starts off with about a 30 second footage of the Legend War. Uh, now we do see the other Sentai teams in there uh, pissing off a lot of people, which I've seen, I, I've actually seen a lot of people get angry at this. And uh, I might go into this if there has to be a part two, because then that would get all my pros and cons aside. But anyway, it's all a dream by Troy, our new Red Ranger, who is now late for school, basically asleep on the bus. Uh, so basically the bus driver wakes him up and he goes to class where <clears throat> Basically, in class, we have our other four rangers, but we don't have the rangers yet. Ooh. Anyway, um, basically, the teacher poses them a question, and, uh, you know, what species uh, would ultimately survive on Earth? I don't remember what the exact question was, but, um, anyway, Emma, basically, our pink ranger, responds with, uh, will be insect, because they basically survived everything we've done so far so basically you know they'll probably be, if anything the last species on earth if that's the question you're referring to uh noah who is basically or you know not basically he's the blue ranger but he i see they're making him the billy reboot only uh better uh basically answer spawns with robots so i'm kind of seeing that he's going to be the robot nerd so i can see him i'm him the one excuse, blah, excuse me he's the one i can see having all the megazord fangasms which would be kind of funny and then Troy comes in, basically saying it's going to be humans, because if we all work together, we can solve all our problems. It's cheesy PR stuff, but kind of true in a way, so I'm not really knocking it. Um, I know there are some people that go, oh, you're so gay, but it's unfortunately kind of a truthful statement. Uh, so anyway, after that, the War Star aliens basically come into the atmosphere. And one thing I do like about the twist about the War Star is that they actually are sympathetic towards, I guess, the insects on the planet, and they believe in insect superiority. Um, so basically, they're like, well, we'll just destroy all the humans. Basically what they'll say. Um, and Creebox is already down on the planet, which I'll get to in a second. Um, so anyway, uh, Tenso and Gosei basically awaken, and basically they've been there for centuries, and they're like, well, you know... The aliens have entered the atmosphere, they're going to invade Earth, so we better get five teenagers with attitude. So Tenso basically pulls up on a screen a bunch of random uh, pictures of people with teenagers, I guess, looking for five uh, qualified um, candidates. Um, and I, I guess I should take this time to mention, Tenso looks like uh, one of the Mars uh, uh, Mars um, blah, Explorer robots, I don't know what they're called. I just know I watched a lot of those documentaries when I was younger. And he looks like those, but I guess the better reference is that he looks like Wally. So, you know, all the people that are like, oh, he's a Wally or a Bob, shut up. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, I can't go on too much. I only have a few, little bit of time. So, anyway, basically, I guess I should go ahead and say this right now. Uh, it cuts back to uh, G and Emma talking, and I guess Emma's going to go off into the woods. G is going to go off to the uh, this season's hangout place, and I guess Jake overhears. And basically goes to Noah and goes, uh, hey dude, you know, Gia's gonna be there, we need to go over there. Um, I'm probably, I'm trying to think if that's what happened, because I just, I just watched the episode once, so I think it's a good time to actually go ahead and get this, uh, alright. So anyway, basically Jake and Noah, so basically Jake overhears and basically goes over, wants to go to the hangout where she's at, and, um, uh, so anyway, they go over there, I'm, I'm trying to abridge this as best as possible, and, uh, Emma's in the woods, and uh, basically, they're trying to cut to where everyone's at, so when they get transported, it's like, this is where they came from. Uh, and then we get a scene where Troy is training on some roof in the city. Um, which is kind of like, okay, I guess they just needed somewhere to place him, because he really wasn't hanging out with the rest of them. Um, so anyway, this is what's going to piss a lot of people off, is that... Um, I'm sorry, Pokemon's on, so I keep getting distracted. <laughs> anyway, uh, basically, the, the season's hangout, uh, from what I assume, is probably is going to be Ernie's brain freeze. And this is where a lot of the stupid comments come from. Like, a lot of people got mad about this because it's like, oh, um, 
that's insulting, you know, the uh, Ernie's original actor from MMPR through Zio. And that, that's stupid in and of itself. Um, I think, personally, I think they should have renamed it something else. But, you know, it's, it's a reference, so I'm not too mad about it. But you got all the retards that are actually legit pissed about this. And you can go on Ranger Board and HLJ. You'll see. Uh, so anyway, um, Jake is going to buy uh, Noah and Gia some ice cream. Uh, I guess he thinks he's being slick and smooth. Um, and while Emma's, meanwhile, we cut to Emma being in the woods taking a picture of the butterflies, the monarch butterfly. Um, she sees Spots Creepox, who I guess was there when he was talking to the other leader. Um, I'm sorry, they didn't really give their names. Actually, I think they did give their names. I'm just being stupid. Anyway, so anyway, uh, he spots her and decides to run after her. So anyway, go say, uh, transports them to the, the command center. But in this scene that's coming up, only four of them are there. Emma is still uh, not present. So basically, they spot Tenso and they question where they are. So they're led into the uh, the main chamber in the center, and they spot all the ranger keys on the wall. And this is where I'm going to go ahead and say I had a fangasm here. I did not expect to have a fangasm, but I had a fangasm here. Now, given I knew going into this episode from, from news weeks and months ago that we Ranger Keys were going to be in the command center, but to actually see them there, I was like, oh my god, this is cool because I'm a, I'm a Go Kaiser fan. And the fact that they're being used to reference earlier seasons of PR is just like, eh. um, So anyway, uh, Troy spots one, looks at all the keys, and he looks at one key in particular, which is the Time Force Red Key. I know it's just something to pan on, but, you know, when I saw the Time Force Red Key, I was like, oh my god! And uh, basically, he remembers that you know these were all the Rangers in the Legend War, his dream. So anyway, after a while, he's telling them everything about the War Star aliens. Um, they're all being skeptical because they're like, "Is this really real?" So anyway, while they're being skeptical, basically Emma gets transported in the last one and tells them that basically he's right; they're not lying, and that she managed to take a picture of Creepbox proving her point. Um, so basically, he gives them their morphers, gives them the speech, and then transports them to the city. I'm trying to bridge this as much as possible because I only got like 18 minutes. Um, so anyway, uh, they we have a really decent civilian fight. They find creative ways of fighting the loogies, and basically, Jake uses a soccer ball. Um, Noah unwittingly uses his laptop, but also hides from the loogies. Uh, he uses his laptop's bag, I should say, and that was only in one scene where he accidentally hit one of them in the face. And uh, Emma's using her camera while Gia and Troy are just flat out using martial arts. Uh, so anyway, they get overwhelmed and they decide to morph and they use the iconic line, it's morphing time. Uh, which, you know, made me happy that they said it. Um, so anyway, they morph and I should guess I should go ahead and talk about the morphing sequence. I, I do like it how they basically have their suit on from basically the neck down. You know, they have their suit on without the helmet. And basically, they do a backflip, and the silhouette of the animal they're representing comes over their head and makes the helmet. Um, different from Ghost Sager, but I did like it. Um, so anyway, after they morph, they basically ride out of the court, use their uh, the battle gear, and they make quick work of the loogies, and we get a mix of original footage with Ghost Sager episode of one footage. Um, so anyway, the War Star aliens see that the Rangers are there, and basically sends down uh, Scaraba, one of the monsters, to attack them. Uh, so anyway, after commercial, uh, it basically, it's, Scarab it's the scene in Ghost Age where Scaraba is basically <sighs> chasing after civilians on his stupid rock boulder thing. It was stupid in Ghost Age, or, um, here it's not as bad. Uh, so anyway, the Rangers arrive, decide to use their blasters to fight the loogs that he sends after them, you know, showing off more toys, and I'm gonna buy a Power Ranger blaster now. Um, so anyway, they destroy the, the boulder out from under him, and he tries to attack them, and basically they make quick work of him, um, making the War Star aliens look like a joke, but then again they were a joke in Ghost Sager. So um, anyway, they basically summon the battle gear again, they do, Emma and Troy do their combo, um, Jake and Gia do their combo, and then Noah finishes off with a Gabo gun. They uh, combine their gear, basically make the Mega Force Blaster, and then they basically blow Scarab up. So then after that, we get them back at the command center, and Gose gives them their inspirational speech of how they were chosen, and basically the same speech that most Ranger teams have gotten in the past, why they were chosen, they deserve this. 
and they're now the protectors of Earth, and they're all in, and then Emma basically says Kimberly's infamous line from Data Dumpster where the, the, she can get helmet hair uh, in her uh, suit, and uh, only this time it's with better acting, uh, which I will go into in a second. And basically, they, they all laugh because it was, um, I guess she was like she legitimately joking. And uh, basically they put all their hands together and go, Earth's defenders never surrender. And the episode ends. Now as to what I thought of this episode, I really liked it. Um, I wasn't expecting to like it as much. I mean, I was looking forward to it, but I was, I was cautiously optimistic. I, I wasn't expecting this episode to actually be as good as it was. And th again, this is my opinion. Some other people can go, oh my god, this sucks. So, um, anyway. Now, I guess the, the price should go into the pros of what I thought of this episode, and one of them is the acting. It was actually decent. I was surprised. I was expecting samurai caliber acting, but no, we actually got decent-ish actors. I'm not going to say it's great. I mean, it's Power Rangers, but it was decent, and most of the, the actors put on decent performances. Troy's the only one I really had a problem with, and I, I don't know if it's because they were trying to make him all stiff, or it's because he didn't really get much screen time out of suit, other than just, because basically what I'm trying to say is, basically everyone else kind of had more character dynamic than Troy, because Jake, we're starting to see, is probably the fun-loving, funny guy, Noah's kind of the nerdy, smart guy, brain, uh... Emma's the nature-loving girl, and uh, Gia is basically, I guess, the good at everything. I didn't really get like, the spot on personality, but she's the, uh, uh, I do know she's, like, the hottest girl in school, which they did say, and she is good-looking, I will say that. But uh, Troy was the only one we really didn't get one on. I guess it's because he's the leader kind of thing, so that I, I, we didn't really get much out of him, other than him training on that building. And one of the con one cons I will say is that, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and say now, is that uh, he wasn't shown too much. He didn't really have much of a dynamic. Uh, and they sh I personally would have questioned his leadership because he was the new kid in school. They didn't know him. Uh, another pro I will say was that this was an original story. This did not copy off Ghost Ager episode one. And this looks like it's not going to be Ghost Ager. But there wasn't much of a story in Ghost Ager anyway. Uh, the cons was... Troy, as I mentioned, uh, he's not a bad actor, I think. I think he's better than Jaden, but he was kind of stiff in this episode. I think it's just because the actor didn't really know what to do, because I don't I, I don't know if, I guess, he just wasn't allowed to do much in this episode, even though it's the episode one and he's the Red Ranger. Another con is this needed to be a two-parter. I did like the episode, but I think things did progress a little too fast. This I, I kind of wanted it to be kind of like SPD Beginnings or, or Mystic Force. Um, which were two very good season starters. Uh, but, but those are really the two cons I had with it. Uh, I really like this episode. I really hope Megaforce is really good. And I'm actually going to watch the show every week. I'm actually going to keep up with the show. And it makes buying the toys even more fun. Because I like buying toys from shows I like. Um, <laughs> anyway. So let me know what you all thought of this episode. Was it good? Um, leave your comments down below. Video responses. And this is Tanner. And I'll see you guys later.